Do you ever feel like some pieces of media are just made for you? Be it a series, game, or film. And it's amazing that they very often tend to slip under my radar until someone recommends them to me. After which I'm thrilled I had the chance to experience them. Today we'll be diving into one such film. 2020's Another Round. Hi my friends, and welcome to the Lions Lounge. Another Round is a Danish film starring Mads Mikkelsen, and follows four friends testing an experiment in drinking, and more specifically in maintaining a .05 BAC, or blood alcohol content level, and how, if doing so, can positively affect their social life and work performance. If that's enough to hook you, you should pause here and go watch it. But if you're still unsure or you've already seen the film, I'll go into a bit more detail, though I will stop at a certain point. Both to give you fair warning that the latter half contains spoilers for the ending, and to make the first of two drinks. The film starts by introducing you to our primary cast of friends. Three teachers, Martin, played by Mads Mikkelsen, Peter and Nikolaj, and a coach, Tommy, all working at the same school and all clearly having midlife crises. Martin himself feels like he's become boring, and when confronting his often absent wife about it, she states that he's changed since they first met, leading to him to break down at Nikolaj's 40th birthday party over drinks, reminiscing about old times when he was more daring, even then he once took jazz ballet lessons to impress his dates. Which as a side note is actually kind of funny because I didn't know that Mads Mikkelsen does have experience with ballet. During that same party, Nikolaj discusses an experiment wherein an individual maintains a BAC of 0.05 during work hours, stating that it can increase performance. And after Martin is confronted by his students and their parents on his disinterest in teaching, he decides to give it a try and sneaks a drink before class. The result being that he feels far more energetic, his students responding positively. From there, the group meet up and form a pact to drink continuously during the day to maintain that BAC and document their results. All of them experience a huge boost almost immediately. Martin and Nikolaj engaging with their classes more and making the lessons incredibly interesting. Peter encouraging his choir to sing with more feeling and Tommy inspiring his players to become more competitive. Martin even sees a drastic improvement in his home life with his wife and sons. All of this eventually inspires them to push the boundaries further and go beyond a 0.05 BAC to just under 0.1. The group continues to see their lives improve, so much so that when Nikolaj pitches that they test the limits, the majority of them agree, the one outlier being Martin, who feels satisfied with his growth, having made significant strides with his family, and decides to leave as his friends share a toast over drinks. And it's here that I want to pause, as beyond this point, we'll be getting into some spoilers for the ending. But if you've come this far and don't want to be spoiled, you can at least stay while I make my first drink, this being the Sazerac. And don't worry, I'll make sure to let you know before I dive into the ending. During the previous scene mentioned, Nikolaj makes the group a Sazerac, which is a very powerful cocktail created in New Orleans sometime in the mid to late 1800s. It typically contains rye whiskey or bourbon, Angostura bitters, Peychaud's bitters, sugar, cognac, and the glass is coated in an absinthe rinse. And while there are many ways to make this, I'm gonna stick with the formula shown in the film, which omits the cognac and the Angostura bitters. So to start, take a mixing glass and drop in a sugar cube. Then add three dashes of Peychaud's bitters. Then just muddle the sugar cube. Then add three ounces or 90 milliliters of bourbon. Add some ice and stir for about 30 seconds. Then take a chilled rocks glass and add half an ounce or 15 milliliters of absinthe. So what's interesting is that in their recipe, they don't just use it to coat the glass, um, which usually implies that you're gonna dump it out. They, they keep the absinthe in there. So I'm gonna stay true to them and, and not dump it out. Now I know their recipe called for an ice sphere, but there's not really much of a need to do that if you have a chilled glass. So then strain your drink into the glass. And for garnish, use an orange peel. And there you have the Sazerac seen in another round. Cheers. Yeah, this is 
really different than just a normal Sazerac, mainly because you are keeping in that absinthe, so those licorice notes really shine through. If you're into black licorice, you'll probably like this drink. It is very powerful because it's basically just bourbon and bitters and then some absinthe. There's no citrus at all. There's basically no water. There's just a little bit of sweetness from that sugar, but mostly it's just very absinthe forward with a little bit of bourbon sweetness. Uh, and the sugar adds a little bit more sweetness to it. Honestly, it's not my favorite variation of the Sazerac. It's not bad, but I feel like Dumping the absinthe kind of helps because then you just get a sort of uh, absinthe rinse that just adds some character to the drink. Plus the addition of cognac and the Angostura bitters adds another dimension to the drink. So I recommend you try that one as well if you're interested. But we'll be getting into something similar in a little bit. If you've made it this far and haven't seen the film and don't want to be spoiled, here's a good place to stop. Martin initially intends to leave as his friends are sharing their drinks. But enticed by the Sazerac, he decides to join in and the group ends up drinking the night away, leading to Martin passing out and injuring himself in front of his house and Nicolaj pissing himself in bed. The two are confronted by their families who are worried about them. And in an argument with his wife, Martin learns that she's been seeing someone else and demands she leave. The group's school finds out that they've been drinking on the job and they decide to end the experiment as they feel they're on the precipice of going too far. All of them but Tommy, who's become an alcoholic. A few months later and the students are all approaching their final exams. Martin, Peter, and Nicolaj find the strength to encourage them and push them to pass and graduate. Just when they're about to celebrate though, they learn some horrible news. Tommy went out on his boat and, too drunk to function properly, fell overboard and drowned. After they attend his funeral, they go out for drinks, still struggling to process everything that's happened. When Martin receives a text from his wife, who wants to give their marriage another shot, and upon hearing their students parading and partying outside the restaurant, the group decides to join them, Martin finally feeling free amongst the sea of euphoria. And for the first time since he was young, he starts to dance, the film ending with him leaping into the air. What I really loved about this movie is that it doesn't condemn or condone drinking. Rather, it demonstrates what could happen if you overindulge, but that, in moderation, it clearly can be used as a powerful tool to help allow people to open up and relax. I really want to thank my friend Foxcade, who recommended this film to me, who perfectly summed it up by comparing it to a scene in an episode of The Simpsons where Homer has a drinking problem. To alcohol! The cause of and solution to all of life's problems. Overall, it's a beautiful film that I enjoyed from start to finish, and I'm incredibly happy that I was able to check it out. Now finally, before I leave you today, I wanted to make my own variation of the Sazerac. One that is a lot more involved, but in my opinion, is really worth it. This being called the Smoked Sazerac. So like before, you're gonna make this in a mixing glass. So we're gonna start this off with a quarter ounce or seven and a half milliliters of cinnamon syrup. This is basically just simple syrup with cinnamon added. Next, an ounce and a half or 45 milliliters of a rye whiskey. I recommend one that's 100 proof because it'll be able to stand up to the rest of these ingredients. Then an ounce and a half or 45 milliliters of Armagnac. I chose to go with Armagnac over Cognac because it has more barely notes that work really well with the spice notes of the rye whiskey and the various bitters that we'll be using. Then three dashes of Peychaud's bitters. And lastly, two dashes of Angostura bitters. Add some ice and stir for 30 seconds. Then I'm gonna take an atomizer containing absinthe and give it a light spritz to coat the glass. Then just pour the contents into the glass. Once again, garnish it with an orange peel. And now here comes the fun part. Using a smoking gun, I'm gonna impart some cherry wood flavor to the drink which is gonna help give it a nice smoky woody flavor that goes really well with all these ingredients. And there you have the smoked Sazerac. Cheers. Ugh, initially on the nose, the smoky burnt orange is very nice. All right, let's give it a taste. Oh, yeah, leagues and bounds beyond the first cocktail. And the reason I think giving an absinthe rinse versus just dumping a whole punch in the cocktail is you get just a hint of that licorice, but it kind of 
rounds out the rest of the ingredients. And the rye whiskey combined with the Armagnac and the cinnamon syrup is just perfect. All those spice notes that those ingredients and the bitters bring combine really well. And then when you give it that spritz of orange and you drop it in and you smoke it, it sort of encases those ingredients and it kind of gives it a charred oaky taste that is extremely pleasant. Honestly, the best way I describe this is, is like a candy, but a smoked candy. It does require a lot more preparation and ingredients than the first drink, but there's a reason for that. The first drink is okay. You know, it's not bad, it's not great. This one though is well worth the time. It's like the difference from getting a steak at Longhorn Steakhouse to a steak from an actual steak restaurant. Yeah, it might sound a little bougie, but trust me, it's worth it. Overall, when I was trying to think up of my Sazerac for the movie, I knew I wanted to do something a little bit different, and it kind of just struck me that I wanted to make a smoked cocktail because I've never done them before. And I figured this was going to be the perfect opportunity because these ingredients kind of lend well to smoking. But if you're able to make this, let me know what you think in the comments below, as well as if you have any favorite cocktails from your favorite films or series. And hey, if you enjoyed this film, I'd really appreciate it if you give a like, and if you wanna see more, go ahead and subscribe. If you wanna see what I make outside this channel, follow me on Twitter at Mr. Space Lion or Instagram at Mr. Space Lion. But friends, thank you so much for stopping by the Lions Lounge. I've been your bartender, Mike, and I hope to see you next time.